too much diversity, if we don't recognize the oneness, we don't see what we have spiritually in common. We actually see everything as so different than ourselves. So that unity and that balance is perfectly revealed in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this particular chapter, it's so extraordinarily um, revealed as the very foundation of loving relationships. And Krishna is also teaching us how, not only how we should see God, Krishna, but how we should see each other. It's the tendency of the false ego that we expect other people to see the same way I see or be the way I want you to be. But how to honor the devotion and the love of different devotees who may have very, very different natures very different conditionings due to the modes of material nature within this world. There's infinite variety in the spiritual world, but there's also incredible variety within this world. Srila Prabhupada, we witnessed how he dealt with so many different people in so many different ways. But it was always to invoke that love that was within them, that devotion, somehow or other. Among people there were, he was, there was Sally Agarwal. She wasn't a vegetarian. <laughs> Prabhupada cooked for her just so that she wouldn't cook meat in the house that he would visit. <laughs> of course, that was part of the reason. The other part is to give her Krishna Prasad. But also, you know, he, he kept the house pure while he was there. He did all the cooking. And she was just a typical American lady, very nice lady. And she loved Prabhupada. And Prabhupada loved her as a merciful spiritual father. She didn't take guidance from him. She didn't take instructions from him. He just needed stuff and she would help him. <laughs> what a unique relationship. And Prabhupada respected and honored that this is, this is who she is and where she's at at her spiritual elevation. And he was... <clears throat> and Dr. Mishra, when he went to New York, he was a... <clears throat> impersonalist, philosophically. So Prabhupada's relationship with him is he would argue philosophy, they would debate. Prabhupada never debated with Sally Agarwal. You know, he, he would just watch how she had this vacuum cleaner and it was incredible, you clean the floor with a vacuum cleaner? I mean, <laughs> she would take him to the, to the laundromat to see how clothes are washed in these machines, like <laughs> Otherwise, Prabhupada would just, you know, just, just knock him against, just splash his clothes against the bathroom floor. So with her, it was all just, with Dr. Misha, it was debate. But still, there was love and respect. And then these different counterculture creatures that started coming. <laughs> oh, I never saw anything like this. You know, it's kind of at Kumbh Mela, you see, but. <laughs> Sh 
Srila Prabhupada, for many years, he had the Prayag Pharmacy where he lived right there in Allahabad. So he would go to the Mag Melas and the Kumbha Melas, but he never saw anything like the hippies. <laughs> the newspaper asked, Swamiji, what, what, can you explain what is a hippie? And Prabhupada just smiled and said, something extraordinary. <laughs> now, this is someone who was seeing the Nagababas and the, oh, and the Ramanuja Sadhus and every type of sadhu and, you know, and Kumbha Mela, people who, you know, standing, doing shirshasan on their heads for days at a time, and people buried under the ground, and people with sticks in their bodies, and all sorts of even different types of yogis. But when he saw the hippies, he said, something extraordinary. <laughs> and they were coming in. And Prabhupada didn't ask him to show them what a vacuum cleaner is, and he didn't debate. He basically engaged them in kirtan and gave them prasad and gradually started preaching to them. And then when we, when we examined Srila Prabhupada's lila, when people actually became devotees, there were so many varieties of devotees. And according to their natures and according to who they are, Sometimes Prabhupada would chastise them like thunderbolts. Sometimes he would just <laughs> caress them like a loving mother. To some he engaged in teaching, to others he engaged in collecting, to others he engaged in administration, to others he engaged in chatriya stuff, services. <clears throat> because not everybody's the same. The same principle is there, but the variegatedness is what makes the spiritual world so beautiful, and the variegatedness is what makes Vaishnav community so beautiful. To honor and respect the core principle that a person wants to serve Krishna is our unity and oneness. But the different natures of people, we reciprocate accordingly, but with affection. That was, this is what Krishna is doing. Prajumana, his son, is coming. And Krishna is blessing him and embracing his son. And then prostitutes are coming. And Krishna is actually honoring them and accepting the nature of their devotion and encouraging them. And then chandalas are coming. How did Krishna encourage them? He knows exactly how to do it. From the top to the bottom of the social scale, everyone was a devotee. And everyone was feeling immense separation from Krishna in Dwarka. When they approached Krishna, they were exclaiming to him that <clears throat> since you've left Dwarka, a moment seems like a million years. This is the literal feeling of the Dwarkavasis. A moment is like a million years. It's not just a poetic um, song. It's, this is how they feel. This is one of the core dynamics of rasa or loving 
the variegatedness of loving reciprocation is Sambhog and Vipralamba. Sambhog is to meet with the Lord, to be in the personal presence of the Lord. Vipralamba is to be in the presence of the Lord deep within one's heart through the agony of separation. That agony is ecstasy. In the material world, agony is never ecstasy. But in dealings with Krishna, the deeper and more intense the feelings toward Krishna, the higher the ecstasy. And in Vipralamba, there is such deep feelings. It goes so intensely to the very core of our very souls that it's ecstasy because Krishna is reciprocating with that love. We're never separated from Krishna when we're remembering him. The residents of Dwarka, 24 hours a day, they were immersed in remembering Krishna in deep separation. It's not that, well, let's, they couldn't forget Krishna even if they wanted. The gopis were saying like that to Uddhava when he came from Mathura with Krishna's message. Even if we want to forget Krishna, we cannot. Impossible. He's totally captivated our hearts, our minds, everything. It's impossible to forget him. That's love. Now, in the material world, if you want to forget something, then you, some people turn on the television or something to distract your mind away. Or you go to the Bollywood cinemas to try to forget things in this world. But in Dwarka, they couldn't forget Krishna. It was impossible. All they could do is just to sing Krishna's glories constantly, just to help each other, to pacify each other with love. And a moment was like a million years. And the dynamics of love, that separation made Krishna's returning so special. It was such a celebration. In Vaishnav life, every day is a holy day. Because the arti is happening for Krishna every day and we're celebrating, it's holy. Every moment we're doing devotional service, it's holy. But still, there's so much variegatedness. There's Janmastami, where this day, like any other day, it's holy because we're serving Krishna and we're remembering Krishna, but we're remembering Krishna as he advents into this world and the incredible leelas and philosophy of his advent. And that's the way when we're offering arti, same Radha Gopinath, but still, the way we offer on John Mastami is very special for that day. And Ram Nomi is another very, very special, variegated way of, of, ex of expressing and meditating on the, on the holiness of the day. And Akadasi is another, and Vamana Dwadasi, and Nityananda Trayodasi, and Adwaita Charya's appearance day, and, and Gaur Purnima and Varaha Dwadasi. And then there's the appearance and disappearance day of so many different acharyas, the Vaishnav calendar. Yes, every day is a holy day. We don't need festivals to make it a holy day. It's not that I, I'm Krishna conscious on the festivals and on other days I go to sleep. <laughs> If you're out distributing books, if you're doing puja, if you're taking care of your, your home, 
as the temple of Krishna, if you're doing your work to, to provide, if you're doing your work with integrity, with Vaishnav character, and taking the earnings of your work and using it for the upliftment of your family and Krishna consciousness and to the world and helping the mission of Mahaprabhu, then every day is a holy day. But still, we have so many festivals. Sometimes we just don't know how to deal with all of them. <laughs> Each one is so unique. <coughs> There's Varaha Dwadasi is a different meditation than Radhastami. <laughs> But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Acharyas, they celebrated all of them. So the variegatedness in the Lord, how he appears within this world, how he reciprocates with different devotees, the variegatedness among devotees, the variegatedness in the services that we have to solve, the variegatedness of every day. All built upon the foundation of, of Sambhog and Vipralamba. Love and meeting and love and separation. And how Krishna is seeing the earnest intent of devotion in everyone. Chitayu was a bird, a vulture type of bird. And he was covered with blood, vulture blood. He was vomiting blood. <coughs> Yet Ram put Jatayu on his lap, his head, was embracing him. And Jatayu died on his lap. It sounds pretty contaminated, isn't it? A dead vulture? But for Rama, he wasn't a dead vulture. He was a devotee who sacrificed his life. <coughs> so whether we're kings or vultures, whether we're scholars or aboriginal fruit vendors, these are details. But they're special details when they are within the realm of devotion. From a material perspective, they're details <coughs> that we deal with with different types of people. But from a spiritual perspective, those details are different ways that Krishna reciprocates with our particular nature of love and devotion. The Almighty Lord greeted everyone present by bowing his head, exchanging greetings, embracing, shaking hands, looking and smiling, giving assurances and awarding benedictions, even to the lowest in rank. From the spiritual perspective, from Krishna's perspective, There really is no high and low. Krishna reciprocates according to these apparent high and low positions. But ultimately, it's our devotion, our bhakti. Even the lowest is the highest when there's love and devotion. Maharaj, would you like to speak something?
Can we give the microphone? Shukadev Maharaj, you are next, so please prepare. <laughs> Thank you very much for a wonderful lecture and reminding us of Krishna in such a nice way. Hare Krishna. You see, that's not the way he answers all his questions, so this is the evidence of this unity and diversity. Thank you, Mara. Microphone is traveling from Vrindavan, where Bhaktiya Samrita Maharaj lives, to Kurukshetra. met the gopis and it was one of the highest deepest exchanges of conjugal love was in Kurukshetra that's where the Hulk meditation of Rati Yatra was manifested Sri Radharani was just in her heart of hearts bringing Krishna back to Vrindavan yes Shukadev Maharaj To hear a little more from you, like you were saying, uh, Krishna, he showed his universal form to Duryodhan, and Duryodhan was covered with Mahamaya, so he could not uh, really accept Krishna as the supreme person. So, if uh, Krishna has covered Duryodhana with Mahamaya, and again he is showing his universal form, uh, so uh, what can be said? Like, and similarly, like you are saying. Uh, and the Chandalas and prostitutes in Dwarka, uh, why they are there? So is it that, uh, that Chandalas and prostitutes, uh, by uh, their, uh, by their occupation, but they are no longer Chandalas and uh, prostitutes? Can you say something? beta beta tattva. They are no longer, but, but at the same time, they still are. They're, they're lovers of Krishna. And they have, you know, they're, they're, they have their births. They have their particular service to society in, in a, in, because you know they were all in a very positive way devotees of devotees so Krishna saw them all he saw their love he, he, he wasn't seeing just their position he was seeing the nature of their love but he was reciprocating that love with respect to their particular positions. That's the beauty of spiritual society. As far as Duryodhana, he was the king. 
Krishna honored so many kings. But ultimately, he sees their love. How Krishna loved Yudhisthira when he was the king, and how much he loved Duryodhana. But he reciprocated according to their consciousness. If we're envious according to the nature of our envy, Mahamaya covers us over. But as Srila Prabhupada concludes this purport, no one is rejected by the Lord from the kingdom of God. He, he gives an open invitation to everyone. It remains with the living being to accept this or not. Duryodhana had free will. He rejected it. Krishna was willing to accept him. When Vibhishan surrendered to Ram, Ram said, anyone who even one time says with a sincere heart, my Lord, I am yours, I will accept that person and give that person shelter forever. This is my vow before all of you. Even if Ravana, had, who had stolen Sita in such a deceiving way, even if Ravana comes to me today to take shelter, I will accept him and give him protection forever. There is no sin, there is no bad karma that Krishna cannot forgive in a second if we deeply take shelter. And that's Krishna's standing invitation to every living being within all the universes of creation. And we as Krishna's devotees, we are the mess, we are meant to serve Krishna by being empowered messengers, giving that message to people. This is the opportunity that you have, and this is how to take the opportunity. Srila Prabhupada delivered so many people in sunny, extraordinary ways, but he always said, I'm just doing postal service, just delivering the message. Krishna's message, as it is. And that is the greatest service that we could render, that pleases Prabhupada and Krishna most, to take this message, to share it with devotees, and to share it with the whole world. This is the opportunity that you have and this is how to accept this opportunity. The opportunity, how to live with the values and the character of a true Vaishnava, which are so beautifully explained in our books, Prabhupada's books. How in that mood to purify our hearts and the hearts of the world through the chanting of the Holy Name. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful lecture. Maharaj, when we hear this unity and diversity concept, in our conditioned mind, still there is some, it's at least in my case, uh, lack of understanding that when we see different types of Vaishnavas, they serve in different environment. 
just like brahmanas are there they are much with scriptures they in and out read here and their life is oriented towards scriptures but when we talk about kshatriyas they are much into world in administration and there is less opportunity to be directly in touch with scriptures vaishyas have different role like that they are more with money and all so here we see these all are vaishnavas and i wanted to know that being in their occupation and some have more opportunity to read here associate some have less opportunity still in their occupation can they be completely purified or that occupation or that service itself leads them to pure devotional service or everyone has to it's come ahead and in them like how much minimum basic minimum at every level person should take care that he should have that association spiritual means directly reading or hearing so that it keeps him krishna conscious krishna and specifically for brahmacharis i wanted to know because i see some brahmacharis they have more inclination towards preaching some they are completely satisfied doing some services some you know they have like kshatriya type of orientation so i wanted to know whether a brahmachari has to be a particular orientation of a brahmana type or these orientations are also well accepted and they can become pure and they can contribute to society being in that so both things He is trained by Radhesh. <laughs> yes. Everything is analyzed in a very profound <laughs> deep way. <clears throat> We want to associate with those who are sincere. The association we're seeking is those who are niskinchanam. Whether they be kings like Prataparudra or Grihastas like Nityananda or swamis like Sanatana and Rupa and Raghunath Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his closest associates, Swarup Damodar Goswami, who was a sannyasi, and Ramananda Rai, who was a governor, whose whole background in life was political from an occupational perspective. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was seeing the sincerity of the purpose and the devotion in each of them. So wherever we see this, this, this striving for niskinshan, a bhakti, striving to be free of ego, striving to, striving to be free of greed and selfish passions, and really tr striving to be servant of the servant of the servant and take shelter of the holy names, whether we find that in a person whose nature is a shudra or a vaishya or a kshatriya or a brahman or a vulture, wherever we see it, that's, that's where Krishna is going to reveal himself to us. There's unity and diversity. Lord Kapila Dev, we explained this during the Yatra. Lord Kapila Dev explains how there's devotional service in the mode of ignorance, devotional service in the mode of passion, goodness, and transcendental. And it's all devotional service, but it's very different in this mortal plane. Devotional service in the mode of ignorance is devotion to serve Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by a person whose character 
is filled with envy, false pride, the intent to create pain or violence to others by our words or our actions, and a separatist idea. People who are harsh, and separatist means they have an interest which is different than pure devotion. And there in Srila Prabhupada, in the purport, he explains to this particular passage in the third canto that Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur tells that anyone who accepts that service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the goal of life is a Vaishnava. But a person who accepts that principle, but they are envious of others, they are harsh toward others. They are proud, arrogant, I'm better than others, <coughs> extensively. Such a person is considered a Vaishnava in the mode of ignorance. And Prabhupada confirms Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, to such people we should not associate with, even though they're devotees, we should not associate with them. We should offer our respects to them as Vaishnavas from a distance. Because if we associate with such devotees, they drag us down to the mode of ignorance. It's very likely. Devotional service in the mode of passion is a person who renders devotional service with the expectation of prestige, fame, wealth, facilities like that, and a separatist. That means they have a separate interest in pleasing the Lord. But at the same time, they want to please the Lord. To get, but they're tinged with the desire to get these things. They're also Vaishnavas by this categorization. And in the mode of goodness, people who render service to the Lord without expectations of results for themselves as the well-wishers of everyone. And transcendental devotional service is the mode of goodness when we actually purely, our only motivation is simply some Siddhir Hari Toshana, Krishna's pleasure. The true well-wishers of everyone. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Rangam, there were learned scholars, and Lord Chaitanya, he personally was seeking and giving the maximum situation to a Brahmin who is practically illiterate because of the sincerity of his attempt to serve. Yes, without motivation. So there are so many different types of brahmacharis and so many different types of grihastas. And we should honor and respect every living entity, not to speak of devotees. But what's healthiest for us is people who have very sin sincere, like-minded desire for this niskinshan of bhakti, unmotivated devotional service. We try to uplift. Krishna tells Uddhava in the Bhagavat this conception of <clears throat> a madhyam adhikari, one who's a serious, sincere devotee. Prahlad also tells similar. Worships the Supreme Lord and the great saints, like the gurus and the elevated souls, serves the seniors, befriends those who are of our same level, relatively, gives guidance, encouragement, and upliftment to our juniors, 
and avoids the association of those who are unrelentlessly envious. So it's unity and diversity. Vidyavanaya sampane brahmani gavihastini suni chaiva sopakecha pandisat samadarshan. We see the equality of all living beings because everyone's a part of Krishna. And a pure devotee feels love and compassion for every living being. But until we come to that Mahabhagava Paramahamsa state, we understand that in principle. But at the same time, we see the differentiation within that unity according to a particular person's sincerity and the intent that they're manifesting through their words and through their actions. Sometimes services change. I was explaining yesterday when I first came to the Hare Krishna movement in 1970. Well, I met Prabhupada and became a devotee in Vrindavan in 1971. But I actually came to our to the movement itself in 72. And I was given the service of shoveling mud from a cow pasture for days and days and days. And I guess I felt like that little sparrow trying to empty the ocean because there was there was thousands of tons of wet sticky mud up to your knees in hundreds of meters of area and I had a little shovel about this big and a little wheelbarrow little thing on wheels and I was asked to sh empty all the mud. So I, I was shoveling from sunrise to sunset and beyond. And after about a week, you could actually see that there was a slight difference. <laughs> And I was all alone. There was no one else doing it. And it was freezing cold. And then after that week, when I actually felt some encouragement because I could actually see that the mud was slightly um, less deep than before, then it rained. And tons and tons and tons of mud came rolling down the hills back. And it was deeper than I started. And it kept raining. And as it's coming down, by the tons, I'm emptying it by the little shovels. Does that make sense? Yes and no. Simultaneous one and difference. <laughs> From a material perspective, it made absolutely no sense because nothing was happening. And all this precious energy of my youth was just being completely dedicated to shoveling and shoveling and shoveling as the mud was getting deeper and deeper. But from a spiritual perspective, according to Bhagavad Gita, because really, I was definitely reciting some serious slokas while I was doing that. <laughs> but I learned from Prabhupada's teachings in Bhagavad Gita that we shouldn't be attached to the results of our labor. We should be attached to the service. So I was, I was trying to surrender. So that Krishna doesn't see how much mud is here. He sees how I'm surrendering. So anyways, I got chastised because I was useless because I couldn't empty all the mud. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be attached to fame or infamy either. That's, <laughs> that's part of the result. <laughs> then I was asked to pull weeds from a garden. 
and I don't want to kill the weeds because I thought weeds are also people. <laughs> and I was told about Kurukshetra, how you, sometimes you have to kill in the service of the Lord. This was too much for me. <laughs> so I was putting my mouth right to the root of the weed and I was chanting the whole Maha Mantra, then I'd pull it. I was pretty sentimental those days. <laughs> and then I took care of cows. I just go with a little stick and make sure the cows didn't eat the wrong stuff. Because they like to eat the wrong stuff. There were these crab apples, and the cows love the taste of them, but it makes their stomachs bloat and they could die from it. So I, I love my little stick, I try to take them to the pasture and on the way there's crab apple trees and they're running to and I'm going, and trying to very gently, because these are Krishna's, Prabhupada said these are Krishna's cows. And they were not Indian cows with humps and they didn't have those fleshy things in the bottom, but Prabhupada said these are Krishna's cows. And one of the most important functions of his society was to teach how to honor and respect cows. <coughs> so I was giving my life for these cows because they are Krishna's cows. Prabhupada was there drinking their milk and petting them and naming them, just like sometimes we name babies. He was naming the cows. And oh, these are Krishna's cows. These are Prabhupada's cows. These are Prabhupada's mothers and children and they're going to eat crab apples and they might die and get sick so I'd have to, on one hand I couldn't let them eat the crab apples on the other hand I couldn't hurt them and they're at least five times bigger than me <laughs> Do you want to hear this story? I'll try to justify your question at the end. <laughs> There's challenges in devotional service. Things are not black and white. These are Krishna's beloved, sacred, worshipable cows. And they're going to eat these crab apples. And they're huge cows. And they love, and they're, they're passionately eating them. And if I start beating them with a stick, then I, what is that? I'm causing pain to Krishna's cows. And if I let them eat, then what? <coughs> then I'm committing violence by letting the, 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 by risking their lives. And I already told you, I was afraid to pull out a weed. So how am I gonna beat a cow? And yet they're running toward the crab apple trees. And, you know, and I was like tapping them on the shoulder. Come, come. <laughs> <laughs> gently pulling their tail and they're... <laughs> Those crab apples tasted so good to them that they didn't even acknowledge my existence. <laughs> And I started hitting them, but they couldn't care less about being hit. I was hitting them a little gently, a little more firmly, a little more firmly, and then nothing worked. So I realized I have to really beat them intensely, and I just wasn't going to do that because, you know, Prabhupada loved his cows. And Krishna, he said, Krishna loves my... I was supposed to be the protector to give pleasure to the cows. Same cows. Prabhupada drank their milk and said, this is the best milk I have drunk in 40 years. And they were Western cows. No 
No doubt that Indian cows are a higher caste. No doubt. But even though these cows were a lower caste, because they were engaged in giving their milk to Krishna, Krishna, Prabhupada considered them Krishna's beloved, worshipable, sacred cows that deserved all respect and love and protection. So, I did all sorts of things. I would get some grains with molasses in it, which is like sugar, which the cows really like. And I'd run back to the Goshala and get some of that, and I'd start, I'd have it in a bucket, and somehow they loved that even better than the crab apples. And I was taking the, I was holding the bucket. <laughs> until I got them far away into the pasture, then I just dumped out the bucket and they ate it, and then they were just eating grass peacefully. Param Drisva Nivartita. Our harmful attachments to the pleasures of this world, the best way is to somehow or other give people a higher taste. And that's what devotional service is. Helping people overcome their anartas and their bad habits by giving them the higher taste. Krishna consciousness. Chanting the holy name. So back to your question. There's different types of brahmacharis, you were asking. There are, and different, according to the particular directions or instructions or natures. You know, I was a brahmachari. I was even given the service of bringing cows and bulls together to produce calves. No, we all know what they have to do to preserve calves. And that, I was thinking, what kind of a brahmachari service is this? <laughs> You know, here I am, you know, I'm hearing all these lectures of how we're supposed to convince people to give up sex life, brahmacharis. And here I am trying to convince the cow and the bull to have sex life <laughs> and make sure that they do. Yes, and now I'm speaking today, Srimad Bhagavatam. So we may have different services. We may, some brahmacharis may be pujaris, some brahmacharis may be cooks. We have Goranga Prabhu, he's IIT graduate, fantastic preacher of Siddhanta, incredible manager and leader in so many ways. And in the yatras, you just see what that really strange looking little hat that he, that they wear. <laughs> I mean, if, if anybody had any false ego, they wouldn't wear those hats. <laughs> you know, you've seen the brahmacharis cooking? It's not like these really distinguished Godiamat turbans that they wear that make them look like, you know, scholars. They just have these little blue things wrapped on their heads, right? And <laughs> they have shaved heads, I guess, so that their sikas don't fall in the food or something. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
but it's hygienic. <laughs> and he's, they're cooking, just cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking. Simple service. And Radhe Shyam Prabhu, his master degree from IIT, it, incredible author of Vaishnav literatures, an incredible orator of Bhagavad Dharma, organizer, leader, <coughs> manager, temple president. And during the Yatra, every time I saw him, he was washing pots, gigantic pots. I mean, you could practically five, five to ten brahmacharis could take, could swim at the same time in a, <laughs> in a single one of those pots. Massive pots. I mean, an elephant can take a bath in this pot. <laughs> and here's this little South Indian Brahmin Vaish <laughs> Vaishnav pundit <laughs> scrubbing the pot. Nobody's taking videos of him. He's just doing it to serve. So whatever particular role a brahmachari may have, they may be scholars, they may not be scholars. What's important is the sincerity of their intent. Hmm? And anyone who has that sincerity of intent, who is sincerely strug struggling and striving for this niskinchana bhakti, Bhakti without selfish motivation. We want to take the dust of their feet. We want to associate with them. Even Grihastha, same thing. In India, Grihastas, you know, some of you are not software engineers. So many software engineers. Some are business, some are farmers, some are doing so many things. Teachers, professors, housewives. <coughs> the sincerity of intent. Where we see that, that character, Vaishnav character, taking shelter. That's where we will find the best association. Does that answer your question? Huh? Excuse me, please repeat. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, to this it is very clear. One small thing I wanted to ask, specifically in Brahmachari Ashram thing, like some services are there, which just like uh, some, which requires even to go a little late nights and all. So sometimes during festivals or all, just like maha cleaning, winding up, whole thing is there. It becomes till 12, 1 o'clock. But when Brahmachari's morning program they attend, so it becomes difficult. This, if festivals are quite repetitive, then this service, which involves these devotees, for them then it becomes difficult to balance their life. But doing this with great intent and remaining time then make up for our devotional loss, whatever, it's, uh, that's helpful for them to progress. That way I wanted to check. We should keep our health stable. But as a brahmachari, you should consult Radhe Sham Prabhu or whoever your leader is and try to, you have to balance your health, balance your sadhana, and balance your seva. But sometimes important services, we have to just do the need for. And we should be willing to do so.
My humble request to all of you, I'm about to end the class, is beware of the crab apples, trees that will appear in your life. The crab apple trees that according to our natures, our conditioned natures, they promise us great satisfaction. But Krishna tells what these crab apple trees would taste like nectar in the begin, beginning, poison in the end. And how do we resist the crab apple trees of life? By eating the sweet alternative of devotional service associating with sadhus and chanting the holy name. Thank you very much.